This is everything we know about the lynching of Deborah Yakubu, the female student in Sokoto who was stoned to death, all because she blasphemed against the prophet Muhammad. From what is being said, Deborah, who some sources also called Dockers, was said to be in a WhatsApp group with her cosmates in the Shehu Shagari College of Education in Sokoto. The WhatsApp group was originally meant for lecture updates, assignments, and things related to the academics. But soon, it was said that the Muslim students in the group turned the group into a religious clique, posting things related to their beliefs, prayers, and scriptures. Apparently, Deborah took offense to how her fellow students had turned their academic group into some religious fest. And because of that, she sent a WhatsApp voice note to the group, cautioning the Muslim students in the group, reminding them that the group was supposed to be for academics and not for religious stuff. Although her tone was a little aggressive and very dismissive, it was said she then talked bad and rudely of the Prophet Muhammad. Holy Ghost fire, but Abunda Zihwaru da mu. Dole ne wasu abubuwa da ya kamata ku tura muna ba wai ayi group din ga don tu da tura abubuwan banza bane fa. Ai do pass you in a quiet test in an bada assignment a tura ba wai abubuwan banzan ga za ku tura muna ba manzo Allah din mi an yi an bro ba. A particular student even replied her with another voice note telling her that she actually just blasphemed. It's unclear if she apologized or it's unclear if she admitted to have done anything wrong. However, it was the voice note she sent to the group that began to circulate amongst Muslim students in the community, as well as in the school too. Just like that, more students got to hear the voice note and more students became agitated. They were irritated and angry and then formed a mob, determined to find her and punish her. Before she was killed, it was said she got threats. Words were already going around that people were looking for her and they were angry at her. Obviously, she knew her life was in danger and most students knew her life was in danger. Some tried to encourage her to run, but you know, she stayed in a hostel and there were people in that hostel who were also angry at her, which made it difficult for those other students who probably wanted to help her escape do it. Some sources claimed that the angry mob came into her hostel and dragged her out before killing her. However, some sources claim that she was taken to the security post of the school with hopes that the security men would be able to hold her and protect her from the angry mob. Unfortunately for Deborah, the mob was overwhelming. The security men meant to protect her were attacked by the mob and eventually the mob got a hold of her. She was dragged and beaten and then stoned. When it was confirmed that she had passed, she was lit on fire. As her remains burned to ashes, the perpetrators and the entire angry mob were seen jubilating in a video they recorded of themselves. One particular angry youth was seen showing the matchstick he used to set her on fire, proudly telling the whole world that he took part in her killing and was clearly proud of it. <laughs> The entire world is shocked at the killing of this young woman. Many people have condemned the actions of these extremists as they call them, including a lot of Muslims themselves. A lot of people are calling for justice for Deborah and there is currently a manhunt for some of the killers of Deborah Yakubu, especially the ones seen in the video jubilating and bragging about their role in her killing. So do you guys think these killers will be caught and brought to book? Because this is my thought. If you have been following my channel for a while, you will know that this is not the first extremist case we are talking about. It's not even the second, this is most likely the third or fourth. We have talked about the killing of Christiana Oluwa Sesin and that of Bridget Agbaime, two women who were killed by Islam extremists in the north, whose justice has not been served for them up to this day. Despite the fact that their killers were caught and apprehended. So with these stories and with these instances in mind, I kind of feel that this might be what would play here. A lot of extremists who kill other people in the name of blasphemy are tend not to be punished by the lawmakers or those in charge of punishing murderers. So even if these killers or even if these boys were caught and arrested, there is a likelihood that they would be released and set to go free before justice is even served. Even if they are caught and taken to court, what are the chances that they will be found guilty and sentenced? Well, let's just hope this particular case would be different. Let's just hope that her story changed the narrative 
and hopefully those who are in charge of serving justice would hold the killers responsible if caught. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that she would ever get the justice that she deserves? Or would she just join the long line of women who have been killed by Islamist extremists that are yet to get justice? Let me know your thoughts.